Hi, I'm Jeff Ludy, the window and door expert. Thanks for watching this video. Today, I'm gonna to answer one of the most common questions we get. Jeff, what window in my home needs to be tempered and what window does not need to be tempered? So let's talk about that. There's basically four main categories for you to look at and some of it can get a little wonky. So I'm gonna put instead a description down at the bottom to go into greater detail of where you can link to get the actual code. Now, I, I have to remind you too that you might find it in your local municipalities they might have some variations to this or some other expectations when it comes to tempering. So you want to check that out before you make a big investment and buy windows. But here's the first one, doors. By the way, just so you should know, right off the top, all doors need to be tempered glass. And if you go look at your window or your door, the way you can know if it's tempered glass or not is to go to the corner, usually in the bottom left or the bottom right hand corner, and you'll see a little etching. Now you might have to get down on your hands and knees because it's barely there, but you'll see the words tempered are going to be is etched into the bottom of the glass. That's how you know it's tempered. So all doors have to be tempered and any window that's within 24 inches of a door. So if you look at this picture here, you can see here's a door that has a window that's right next to it. We call this a side light window. This window, since it's within 24 inches of a door, needs to be tempered. Now there is an exception to that, which is if that window even though it's within 24 inches of the door, if it's above 60 inches, get used to the number 60 because you're gonna learn more about that throughout this whole video. So if you do have a window that's next to a door and it's within 24 inches of the door, it does need to be tempered. But if it's above the door, for example, if you have one of those beautiful windows that sits above your door, since it's 60 inches or above, it does not need to be tempered. So that's something to keep, keep your eye on. Now, it can get a little, splitting hairs here, but let's suppose for just a minute that you said, well, Jeff, my door swings open and there's a window on that wall that's perpendicular to it. If it's within 24 inches of the hinge side of the door, it has to be tempered. If it's within 24 inches of the latch side of the door, it doesn't. In other words, if, it's not, if the door's not gonna open onto that window, then no, you're not gonna have to temper it if it's on a perpendicular wall to your door. Well, why, Jeff? Well, think about this. Try to use common sense when you think about these codes and most of them will make sense to you. One is, if a door was to swing open, say the wind grabbed it or somebody was pulling on the door while you were pushing on the door and you were to accidentally fall into a window, is there a window nearby that you could bump into? Is there a place nearby you might get hurt? That's the whole goal behind doing this. Before we go any further, I should mention what is tempered glass, right? Well, I have a great video about tempered glass and talk about how it's made and how hard it is to break. I'll put the link to that up there. It's actually quite entertaining. We use baseballs and golf balls and basketballs and footballs. We do everything we can just to show you how tough tempered glass is. Tempered glass is actually four times stronger than annealed glass or regular glass. And when it does break, it doesn't break into these really dangerous large shards of glass that could cut you. Instead, it breaks like a car windshield would or a car door would, the window on the door where it's just these little less harmful uh, little pieces of glass. So that's important. Then. Okay, so the second one is stairways. I mean, imagine you're walking down a stairway. What if you tripped and you fell? Would you be able to hit a window? Think about it that way. So here's the rule with stairways. Remember I mentioned 60 inches being kind of a number to remember? This is how it works for stairways. When you walk down a set of stairs, you get to the very last step, the last tread. Measure from the last tread of the stairs to the nearest window in a 180, 180 degree radius, okay? 180 degree radius. Anything within 60 inches of that bottom tread needs to be tempered. The exception is if that window is above 60 inches. So let's say the window's only 36 inches away from the bottom tread, okay? You would think, oh, it must be tempered because Jeff said it's under 60 inches. But if it's above 60 inches from the floor, then yeah, it's kind of impossible to fall down the stairs and then jump up at the last minute and hit a window that's 60 inches off the floor. That's the reason they do that. One more thing about stairs. If you're walking down a set of stairs and you have a window, say, to your left or to your right, if that window is above 36 inches from the stairs, then it does not have to be tempered, okay? So that's the exception. 36 inches if you're walking next to the window, 60 inches if you're going to walk into that window at a landing either a halfway down landing as you go down the stairs or at the very bottom of the stairs when you get to the bottom. So that's the stairs. The other is wet surfaces. Think about a shower, think about a bathtub, think about a hot tub, think about a swimming pool. Don't always think about just the inside of the house. Think about the contact you might have from the outside of the house with a piece of glass as well. This is all designed to help keep you safe. If you have a shower or a bathtub and there's gonna be a window, again, back to 60, within 60 inches of that wet surface, not the drain of the shower, no, 
any part of that wet surface, if you have a bathtub that's five feet wide, go from either end of the bathtub, one to the other, and look at a 60 inch radius from there. If you could stand anywhere in that bathtub and hold a tape measure and hit a window at 60 inches, that window has to be tempered. Again, just like the stairwell though, if it is above 60 inches, then it doesn't matter. That's why a lot of times you'll see in a shower, there's a window right up high. Have you ever seen that little window up in a shower? It's up high. That's okay. That one doesn't have to be tempered as long as it's 60 inches or above. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, the fourth one. Oh, by the way, before I should get to the last one, I should make this important point. You say to yourself, well, Jeff, why do I want to temper my windows? Because it helps you be safe. Does it cost more to temper a window? Yes, it does. It adds usually about 50% more to the cost of a window. Well, you know what, Jeff? I'm just going to skip it then. I don't want to. I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Well, here's the problem with that. And I think this is something you should really try to understand. Number one is if you ever decide to sell your home, any inspector who's worth his salt is going to determine by looking at these things, because they do this all day, that you don't have a tempered unit. You're going to have to do it eventually, or you're going to have to knock off the price of the window on the sale of your house to accommodate a new homeowner. Think about this. Would you buy a house knowing it didn't meet code? Would you buy a house, especially if you had little kids, knowing that the windows weren't tempered where they're supposed to be? Of course you wouldn't, right? You'd want something to be done about it. So do it now instead of pay more for it later. When it happens, it's cheaper to do it right now. But also one of the things you have to consider too is liability. And you know, we are a litigious society right now. If somebody said to me, Jeff, I don't care. I'll sign a waiver saying I don't need tempered glass. I don't want tempered glass. I won't sell them the window because I know you're supposed to have a tempered window in that opening. And if you said, I don't care, I don't want to pay for it. I won't sell you the window. You know why? Because if you were to, first of all, I don't want you to get hurt, right? And I knowingly put you in a situation where you could get hurt. But number two, if you get hurt or somebody comes over to visit you and gets hurt at your home, any good lawyer is going to not just sue you, they're going to sue the guy who sold you the window. I don't want to have a part of that. I don't want to be a part of that. I want you to be safe. I want you to enjoy your windows for a long period of time. And I'd say either don't buy the window or buy it right, right? Do it right the first time. It just makes more sense. Okay, onto the last one. Big pieces of glass that sit low to the floor can be more dangerous. Why can it be more dangerous? Imagine a kid on a tricycle, right? Riding his tricycle, he accidentally hits a window. If that window's off the, off the floor quite a ways, it's not as dangerous as if that window was down low. So here's what the rule says about a typical window and just about any other environment. If the piece of glass we're talking about is more than nine square feet, okay, more than nine square feet and is below 18 inches. So in other words, if it's under 18 inches from the floor, you know, floor to 18 inches, less than that, and exceeds nine square feet, it has to be tempered. So think about this. If you have a window that's six inches off the floor, and here's a good picture of a window that's just barely off the floor, okay? But it does not exceed nine square feet of glass, then it doesn't have to be tempered. Now, if it exceeds more than nine square feet, like look at this picture. Here's a window that is low to the ground, okay? And it is really big. It's great because you have a great view to the outside. That exceeds nine square feet that is going to have to be tempered. Now, here's what you can do. There's a little workaround for that. You can either raise the window, okay? Or you can divide it. Look at this picture here. Here's a window where the bottom of it is under nine square feet. The top of it is over nine square feet. So we are able to not have to temper either the top or the bottom because we kept the bottom piece under nine square feet. Hope that all makes sense. Check out in the description below a link to more information about this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you live in the Houston area, please come by. I'd love to meet you. We'd love to actually come out and take a look at your project so we can, we can see what needs to be tempered, what doesn't. And if you don't live in the Houston area and you're looking for a great window company near you, please check out jeffslist.com. And thank you again for watching. I'm Jeff Ludy, the window and door expert. I hope to catch you again real soon. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe because we make great videos like this every week. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.